Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, where bridal sewing is fun and, well, usually painless. Every seamster suffers a hard jab every now and then with the needle, right? Well, we're going to talk today about how to hem a lined horsehair braid hem. This is a very, very common hem. You're usually going to find it on the skirt of a bridal gown that is um, satin, a satin shell on the outside. Of course, it could be other fabrics, um, but that's the most common fabric. Um, it's fully lined, so you can see by these pictures, I wanted you to see some up-close pictures of how it looks inside and out, just so we can make sure we're on the same page. When you squeeze and kind of spring on that hem, you can feel there's a braided nylon trim inside of there, and that gives the dress a nice body. So here you can see where I've marked the hem with pins. I always mark the floor, and then I can adjust um, the length of the hem from there if the bride wants it a little off the floor or to hit the floor. Either way, that's fine, but I consistently mark the floor. Here I've knocked down an inch um, and marked again. That's where I'm gonna cut. I always cut with an inch seam allowance inside my horsehair braid hems. Here's my taper. This bride wanted the taper to be behind her side seams. So I've marked the line of the taper. And now I'm gonna start cutting. I'm gonna cut from the taper to the side seam all the way to the pin that marks the center front. And then I'm gonna double this hem over so that I can make sure that I mirror the taper the right way. I want the footprint of the train to be symmetrical. Um, now everybody's bodies are asymmetrical. Uh, legs are different lengths, that kind of thing. So you're gonna see when we flip this over, um, one side seam needs to be hemmed a little more than the other. That's completely normal. So you don't just mark your hem in the center front. You need to mark, you know, a quarter in the front and also on the side seams so I'm gonna flip this and what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna cut a little high um, for this cut and then I'm gonna kind of immediately slope it down to join the taper so that the footprint of the train is the same I just wanted to show this because this is a super common occurrence so you can see how it's offset a little bit there but otherwise everything else is lining up to be symmetrical. That's much easier to get it symmetrical that way than it is to measure everything out. Here I am looking at where I started the cut. I need to cut out this um, jagged horsehair braid and also the jagged seam allowance because that's going to kind of uh, faintly be seen through the hem and we don't want to mess there. So we're going to cut that out. And I just use a razor blade. Always make sure the blade is facing toward the thing that's okay if it gets cut. So you don't want to face it toward, say, the shell fabric of the gown ever. You're going to want to face it toward the horsehair braid because we don't care if that gets cut a little bit, right? So we're going to cut this jagged piece off. And same with that. All right, now we're gonna lift up the skirt and we're gonna find the seam that's running down. It runs down the front of the leg. There's a couple of them in front. Sometimes it's all one piece in front and you have to find a side seam, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a razor, we're gonna open this and we're gonna make a little vent that gives us access to the inside of the hem of this dress. Now, you remember the horsehair braid was on the inside of the hem. Um, so when we sew the horsehair braid back in, that's where we have to sew. This is how you gain access. You're gonna to wanna to make this hole nice and big. It only takes a couple seconds to sew it up in the end. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but if you make it really small, it's gonna be frustrating to pull the hem through. All right, so I do not have it turned wrong side out yet. This is my horsehair braid. This is new horsehair braid off the spool. You can see how it springs and expands and stretches and twists. Here's some product information if you're looking for it. I think it's also on my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com. Um, I have Amazon links on there. 
I'm an Amazon affiliate, so they don't charge you anymore on Amazon for using those links. I just have them all in one place for you. Um, and it helps me out a little bit too. So if you go to bridalsewingtechniques.com, you can go to my products page and I think I have this on there. All right, so I'm gonna lay this horsehair braid down and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nestle it down into that old seam allowance where the old horsehair braid is. And this is being sewn to the inside of the lining, okay? And what I'm gonna do is quickly swoop it up to be about an inch and a quarter from the side, from the from the cut edge. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because I want that one inch seam allowance in there. The inch and a quarter just gives some space for the fabric to turn there on an, on the new edge. Um, so you can you can kind of sew the horsehair braid up a smidge high, um, and it'll be fine if it doesn't feel you know, the exact turn of the fabric, um, but you don't want to sew it too low, too close to the cut edge. If you do that, the hem is just gonna be too long. I prefer the uh, one inch seam allowance uh, because it gives me plenty of wiggle room. I don't wanna do like a quarter of an inch because what if the bride puts the dress on and she decides that the hem is too short and she wants it longer? Um, I want to have that extra fabric in there so that I can nudge the hem back down. A couple other points of note here is uh, when you see the horsehair braid, the lined horsehair braid hems, you will see that there are, you know, a thousand different ways that you can sew this hem. They're pretty much all the same, but the details can vary. So what I do is I try to sew my hem the same exact way every single time, okay? So you may get a horsehair braid hem that the shell fabric is rolling over the new hem edge and um, is, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, um, quarter of an inch of it is on there before it joins the lining on the inside of the dress. Um, if, you, if you look at a lot of these different hems, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, if you haven't had a chance to look at a lot of the hems, you're not gonna know what I'm talking about and don't worry about it. Uh, but if you do know about it, I just wanted to mention this to you. Um, I do not try to duplicate that measured roll on every hem. The reason is because I can sew uh, more accurately if I sew consistently. Um, so I'm gonna do this hem every time where my seam, where the two fabrics are joined, is on the very edge every time. Now, if you're sewing on a hem that wasn't put together that way, um, you just need to make sure that your transition looks really nice and neat in case somebody turns up the hem where that taper is, um, that it still looks good, but that's not hard to do. So anyways, uh, focus on the consistency for your accuracy because you don't want to get your hems wrong. All right, we'll get going again. I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so now you're gonna see where I'm tapering the horsehair braid back into the old original edge of the hem. I'm just going to overlap it onto the old horsehair braid um, and you're going to see I don't worry about finishing it off. It's on the inside of the dress. That's one of the perks of being on the inside of the dress. It doesn't have to be uh, like folded over or covered with hem tape or anything. So uh, now I'm going to reach through that vent that I made. There we go. And I'm going to reach through and I'm going to get where I started that cut of the hem. If you were looking at the bride, it would be on the right, on her right, there at the floor. I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna grab that seam allowance and I'm gonna pull it through the vent. You might have to watch this a couple times, it's all right, you can pause it, slide back, watch it again. I'm gonna pull it through the vent. There you go. And now I'm going to sew the lining to the shell fabric. Just gonna put it in there we're gonna start our taper where they used to you know where they were sewing you just sew right over their old stitches and you're gonna swing it up from there to um, giving yourself a one inch seam allowance I'm gonna line up my side seams there pull it taut that way your uh, feed dogs don't do a microscopic gathering as you sew to where you're fabric doesn't end up lining up in the end. Alright, so 
By the time I've reached my side seam, I do have that one inch seam allowance. And I just have to sew this together, holding it taut. Sometimes too, you'll notice a little, um, you know, from where your stroke of cutting left like a little notch in the fabric or something like that. Use those landmarks even um, to hold the two fabrics together as you sew when you pull it taut so that you make sure that one fabric isn't walking more than the other and you end up with the dress being misaligned. Here's another seam that's going to work for a landmark for me. And you just have to keep feeding this fabric through as you sew. Now, some people sew their horsehair braid. I should have said this earlier, but some people sew their horsehair braid uh, right on the very edge of the horsehair braid. You'll notice um, earlier in the footage, I actually sewed just a little off center. I like to do that so that the horsehair braid can't flip in the hem. I've had problems if you sew it on the edge with the horsehair braid flipping. Um, so that'll make it nice and stable. That's just a personal preference. So when you look at the inside of this hem, originally their stitch holding the horsehair braid down was all the way at the very edge of the hem. Um, mine is going to be up by like three quarters of an inch. It does not matter one bit. It just gives me that extra stability and that's what I like. So that's the way we do it. So again, I'm making sure it is completely aligned. That way you don't get puckers in the hem. Don't forget to visit us over at BridalSewingTechniques.com if you ever want to take a little retreat and uh, come watch me work in the studio, you can do that. We've got one day packages, one week packages, two week packages. They're super affordable and they can really uh, help you get some wind at your back to getting into bridal sewing full time. That's what we're here for to help seamsters make the leap from regular sewing, sewing a little bit of everything, to specializing in bridal. And I certainly hope we're helping you on your journey. It's an exciting journey. Uh, don't get stressed out. Just think ahead before you do everything and it's gonna be all right. It's a beautiful job. All right, so I'm coming up on my taper. That would be the left side of her hem if you were facing the bride. So you can see my seam allowance is getting more narrow because I'm tapering it down to their itty bitty seam allowance. Was not very generous of them, was it? If we had a tall bride, she'd kind of be up a creek. All right, so this is what it looks like. You got your one inch horsehair braid and then you got your one inch seam allowance. And this is the edge um, I just wanted to show you it's nice and messy on the inside and it doesn't matter. The end of that horsehair braid. All right, so we're going to turn it back to be right side out. And we're going to check out this edge. And it's going to be a little fluffy. It still needs to be pressed. So we'll have to press out that taper, make the taper nice and neat you just kind of pull on it and and press it to make it pretty and here's the edge of the hem there's the back side pressing is everything for the horsehair braid hem um, and if you really need to work the the taper remember to use your tailor's clapper i do have a separate video about using the tailor's clapper but you can get a nice hard pressed edge with that here we go pressing Use a little burst of steam and then lots of pressure is the way you're going to do this. And here's what that nice new hem looks like. There's the seam on the very edge. And again.
again at another spot on the hem. All right, now I'm going to sew up that vent that I made. Just super fast. Easy peasy. I hope this has helped you. Please hit share and subscribe. You can even hit the little bell for notifications. This is also in my hemming series, so check out my playlist on my channel. There's a playlist full of hymns.